friends, Leslie from A Friend to Knit With. Welcome to episode 42 of A Friend to Knit With podcast. Today is August 10th and it's a Thursday afternoon. We have had such spectacular weather here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I wouldn't wear my ranunculus outside because it's made out of alpaca and merino, but it's okay temporarily in the air conditioning. Um, if you have stumbled upon this channel, it is a channel mostly about knitting. So if you love to knit as much as I love to knit, then you're in the right spot. I have said for years that my day is not complete without a little bit of knitting. That has been my mantra and my mojo, my everything for many years. So I love to knit. That is one fact about me that is very solid. Uh, so if you love to knit too, then you're in the right spot. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. There are so many amazing podcasts out there. And I just so appreciate the time that you have to share with me. Um, yeah, I'm glad we're friends to knit with. So I am going to keep this podcast probably pretty short and, um, show you what's off my needles, what's on my needles, and what future plans I have for on my needles. So the first thing that's off my needles is, I know everyone has at least probably heard of it, if they haven't made one yet, or 44, like one of our viewers, or 11, like another viewer, you guys are the bomb, or five or six or seven, you guys are amazing. Uh, this is just my second, but I, no, it won't be my last. I literally, although I am crushing on brown, like you cannot believe, I want one in navy and gray and black and pretty much all those neutral basics that I love so much. I would like the everyday pullover, which by the way, Pearl Soho has linen quill on sale. I'm thinking about ordering the denim color for another one of those. But I love an everyday pullover and I love a ranunculus. They're just very fun to make and wearable. Very, very wearable. So this is the ranunculus. It is made out of a wool and alpaca that I found in when I went out to the San Juan Islands the beginning of the summer and I went, I had a couple of people help me with my pronunciation of the yarn store, but two people said different things. So one said sale, like S-A-I-L, sale-ish yarn. And the other one said it's S-A-Y, like sale-ish yarn. So I'm still not sure, but it's sale Salish Yarn Company, Salish Yarn Company, out on Orcas Island. And when I went into the cute little coffee slash yarn store, I found a picture of that little guy and he was wrapped around this brown yummy yarn. And so I bought all they had of the brown, which was three skeins. So I had messaged them to see if I could get another one, ended up finishing my sweater, but they did message me back and tell me that they have 12, this was about 10 days ago, 12 in stock of the brown. So if you're looking to make a brown one, if you're crushing like I am, um, you can see if they'll, I have, a, we'll have everything linked below. You can see if you get, can get some brown. They also had the gray and the natural, but this is also natural. So it's the natural brown, the natural gray, and the natural, you know, like the acro off-white color in stock. Uh, so this was all I had left, that's it, from the three skeins. Now, when I bought the three skeins, I felt pretty certain that I could make a ranunculus because that would be 600 yards. They're each 200 yards. Um, uh, and it's 80% alpaca and 20% merino. So I was pretty certain, but as I was knitting, I was, you know, playing yarn chicken and I could have used this and added a couple more rows to each arm, which I maybe would have liked, but I'll show you the fit. I'm pretty happy with the entire thing, the way it fit turned out. Um, so, and because it's alpaca, like many of you said, it probably will grow. So I do have that in my favor, but I like the length a lot. Um, I think if I wear 
anything shorter than high-waisted pants like these that I might wear a blouse or a shirt under it. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with the way it fit. And I would have liked my sleeves a little bit longer, but I didn't want to take out the twisted rib bind off and use, you know, that much. So I'm just going to leave them and I will probably most of the time have it, you know, pushed up. So, but yeah, it just would have been better right there, but maybe they'll grow. I think it is just going to keep getting better and better, but yes, you know, the ranunculus with the detailed yoke and you know, I'm a raglan girl, but I love this yoke for some reason. It's just feminine and I have a natural cami on under here. A lot of people complain about the holes, but you can just wear a cami or a blouse or a t-shirt or something. And yeah, and you don't have to wear a nude because then you won't look nude. You could wear, you know, match your sweater and or contrasting would be fun. Yeah, just have a nude under here. I have a, been getting a couple questions about it because in the pattern and a lot of those are it's just really boxy and why mine isn't boxy people want to know i think it's because i'm using a heavier yarn i think it's because i'm using i knit a size one these are also made out of fingering or lace weight so that will definitely give you a drapier fit than the alpaca um or than the worsted weight yarn so that could be it. It's not, as you can see, it's not that boxy, but it's still, it's not like a tight fitting sweater. So, um, you know, it still is a little boxy. Maybe my pictures just made it look like it was more fitted, but you know, it is a little boxy. So anyhow, that's funny. I do say that a lot. That was funny. <laughs> Um, I love a ranunculus. The other question I get quite often is my neckline, how it's not that wide neckline. And there are two different necklines you can do. You could do the loose one and the tighter one, but most of the tighter one, see if you can see, those necklines are really wide. Mine is nowhere near being that wide. And I cast on the same amount of stitches. I do a long tail cast on. I think that's what makes the difference. Um, she has two necklines. For the wider neckline, you use the double twist loop cast on, which I did not use. And then for the smaller neckline, a tubular cast on. So I do a, you know, long tail cast on, and I think that's why I get just this tighter neck. Um, now, I have to say, I don't know, maybe it's because it's summer and I haven't been wearing, you know, fibers like this, but I am super sensitive on my neck. I thought it was just mohair, but the alpaca, Cashmere doesn't seem to affect it at all, but yeah, I don't know. I'm a little sensitive. So I wanted to tell you, I'll probably either wear a shirt under it or I like wearing a scarf like this. Um, and this is just an old ring that I picked up at a vintage store years ago. It's, that's not real diamonds, but um, it's just, a costume jewelry ring. You can also use, you know, a rubber band or a hair tie or something like that. But instead of tying it in a knot and having that knot under there, if you like to just, you know, do it like that, that works out well. And then you don't have that big bump there. Um, or you can actually show your, you know, ring or whatever. So hit up your mom's or your daughter's or your sister's or your friend's jewelry boxes. Um, I think this, this doesn't go with this, but I think that a big chunky one would be super cool too. And just left out, you know, a big 
chunky ring. Um, and this is not, that would stay in place. It's a heavy ring too. But yes, you can, if you're sensitive or if you just like the look, you could do this also. And either leave it out or tuck it in. But that way I can wear this right up against my neck and it doesn't bother me. Which I love. So hopefully that can help somebody else too with their itch problem. The rest of my body doesn't have it at all. It's not affected. It's just my neck. So very sensitive neck. Uh, all right. That's the only thing. Oh no, I made, that's the only thing for me. I made a gift um, and this is the friend of friend in Bellini. I just wanted to mention that my friend who I made this for is very long waisted. So this is the size three. And she said, you know, because of her large chest, she wanted more space in there. So I, and I get so many questions on where to add the extra rows for the length, but right before every increase, so there's different sections and then I decrease. So you're gonna keep decreasing as you go. And I would add an extra row in each one until you get to the desired length. So, you know, four rows is probably an inch. So you would, if you wanna add an inch, you would do it between four of the decreases. If you want to add an inch and a half between every, and you can even do more than one row. But I would definitely start at the bottom and then um, add those there or all the way up if you want. But that's what I did. I added an inch and a half, so I did an extra row before every decrease. And I'll let you know, maybe she'll send me a picture. And I will link everything below in the description box. Um, oh, and I'm gonna show you what a friend over on Instagram did. Can you believe how she embroidered these amazing wildflowers on here? Ah, oh, isn't that beautiful? People are amazing. Yes, and I still want to try Marilisa's how Marilisa from Girl Meets Yarn. She did the, she just did embroidery floss, or you could use yarn, and just ran it through up and across. So cute. Still want to try that. All right, so. That's all that came off my needles in the last couple of weeks. Um, but I did cast on a few things. So it was August 1st or the end of July, the last day of July, and I realized that I didn't have my summer tea that I wanted to make. I just wanted to make just a knit tea. So, and usually with those, you have to use a finer yarn. So, to get that look that you want. But I was scouring Instagram and I, or Ravelry, and I found um, the Everyday Attitude sweater, and it's by Suzanne Summers. So I think it's Suso Knits. Um, you guys probably follow her, but she was new to me, and she had this cute striped sweater on there which I just fell in love. And I really like the construction. It's all done in garter. So you are knitting, right now I'm knitting every row. And I you cast on here and you increase on the end and down along the shoulder. So you have this beautiful chevron shoulder. I absolutely love that look. And so that, then you pick up or you, no, let's see. I put this on a holder. I knit the back. And like I said, you're knitting every row because it's garter. Can you tell? And then I put the front needles on or from the holder onto the needles and, you know, cast on along the front of the neck. And then um, I'm going to knit till the length of the back. And so then that will be the armhole there. And then you join. And by the time you, been, and then after you join, you're going to knit a row and purl row because you're going to join it in the row. And to continue the garter, you'll knit a row and purl row. But I don't think that this is going to take that much longer. Absolutely love this. 
Unfortunately, I'm using yarn that has been discontinued. I just looked it up before I got on and I knew it was on sale. That's why I bought so much. And then, but I thought maybe, you know, they're just cleaning up because by the way, um, Pearl Soho has a linen quill on sale and you know, that doesn't mean they're discon gonna discontinue it, but they did discontinue this. So I am using the heirloom white and the carbon black, and this is how much I have left. I've been, I think I might be able to get it, the whole thing out of one ball of each. So if that's the case, then I will have some extra yarn and I'd love to gift it to somebody who would like to make one since you can't get the yarn. And I really like to share things that you can get too. So be sure to watch for next episode and I'll, um, you know, give that away if you want to make that. But I love this. It's on US size three needle. So it is a slower going project, but yeah, I don't know why I have two projects on three needles. This next one actually called for a two and a half needle. Now, do we have a US two and a half? I know that the millimeter, let's see. On my Susan Bates, this, it, there's not a two and a half. And I didn't have a two and a half. There's a zero, one, two, three, and then the only half would be a 10 and a half. So I don't know, is there a two and a half? I wasn't really that certain, it's this one. There's two and a half millimeters, but yeah, the pattern said US two and a half. Yeah, US 2.5, right there. So I'm using a US three because didn't have it and hopefully it will be the right fit. Now, this is a slow going project for me because if you, I have watched my episodes. I'm an English style knitter, but I have taught myself to knit continental. I am probably the same speed. It's not like continental saves me anything. The only difference is I can carry on a conversation with you and knit English style. And I can also like watch TV or a movie or something like that. So I can have a conversation, which is important, and I can watch something on TV. Now, if I'm knitting continental style, that's not the case. And this is all done in ribs, so I decided I should be knitting it to be more efficient, continental. So that's why this is going so slowly. And I have to be outside because it's black, and I can only knit this in the summertime. Um, or somewhere with really, really spectacular light. But that's a problem. So being alone, because I have to have my face down, I can't be chatting with anyone, um, or outside. So that's why this is so slow. But I think I have 10 more of these repeats before I separate for the um, sleeves. And I really love, you can either put these little three buttons there or this little key notch. I just think this is such a nice feminine layering piece. Um, I just love it. And it was a collaboration with my friend Katrine from Unling. And um, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm just, I don't have the right pronunciation of her name. It's something beautiful sounding, I'm sure, but it's R-I-K-K-I, so I, Ricky is how I would say it. I know, it's terrible. And then uh, Jo Anson is her last name, and she designed it, and then Katrine wrote up the pattern, and we are using, the pattern is using, so I am using only number 21 to, um, knit it and it is a blend of cotton and linen and it is a perfect summer weight uh, because it makes that nice fine summer knit but these take summer knits take a long time people think but you can't really have a you know chunky yarn for summer i don't think chunky cotton maybe but i yeah maybe but for like an everyday sweater 
I think the finer yarn works better. So anyhow, I really like both of these yarns. You can tell the linen in this, it's a little stiffer um, and it gives it some structure. And then the cotton is really drapey. I absolutely adore this cotton. I'm really bummed that they um, discontinued it. This is what I made this um, everyday cotton or buttercup cotton is what I made the uh, never ending story sweater out of last August. And I love that sweater so much. The cotton is worn so well. I've worn this sweater a lot over my shoulders or just worn, but it's a nice little layering piece. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm bummed. I feel like emailing them, telling them, bring back the cotton. It was out of, uh, Peru, I think. So maybe there was some distribution issues. Let's see. Yeah, made in Peru. So maybe they're gonna bring it back. Anyhow, hopefully I'll have some leftover though and or some skeins still available in my stash and I can share with one of my friends. So if you're interested, um, be sure to check in for my next episode. Hopefully I'll have that finished. Yes, I will definitely have that finished. So the only other thing I have on my needles, which is my drag around card knitting uh, project, is a best friend butterfly blanket for a friend. This is in the color dusty pink, and this is made out of the, um, is it dusty pink? Hold on. Light rose, light rose. Looks like dusty pink. <laughs> Light rose and yeah, it's a nice color. Um, this is extremely affordable. It's the big twist value. And I know people don't like acrylic, but this is 100% acrylic. It can be thrown in the washing machine. And I tell the moms to throw it in the dryer because that's what I do too. And it gets softer with every wear. I mean, every wash. It is really, but it does say to not throw it in the washer to lie it flat, but I have, I can attest that it is amazing after it's dried as well. Um, and then if the edges curl up, which I have a lot of people message me how to keep the edges down, right when I give it, I just give it a nice little steam along the edges after it's out of the dryer. And then when you can present it, it's really nice. And I've seen them washed and dried a bunch and the mothers just don't seem to care if it rolls a little bit on the edge. Um, so there's that. I just don't think they're that fussy then because they're so happy to have a baby. <laughs> uh, let's see, do I have anything else to tell you? I'm going to put a clip of our hornet's nest. If you follow me on Instagram, I have showed the beginning of the hornet's nest at the beginning of the summer. You guys, it is giant. It is in our dining room. It is a fascination moment every day. And whenever anyone comes over, we have to take them to the hornet's nest and mouths fall open. So I'm going to show you the inside of a hornet's nest because they put, they built their nest on our window. So we can see right in and they are just busy bees, just like we are knitting. They are very busy. Um, so yes, I have a lot to knit. I better get knitting myself. Um, I have one more thing I want to cast on. It is calling my name. The girls from Caddy Jacks are doing a three-day weekend. Three-day weekend. Three-day weekend using the weekender sweater from Andrea Mowry. It runs from Memorial Day to Labor Day. So I will not get in for the cow to knit along, but I do want a weekender made out of Big Birdie. And this is the color oat, which I am just perfect. Like, can you imagine fall morning with this? And a big cozy sweater. Now the weekender, I've made two of them. They weren't my favorite. Um, because I, I made some errors. Uh, I 
never made the arm deep enough so it was always super tight right where it joined so that was all my fault I could have modified that and then the other thing was I am not crazy about the boat neck I did modify it on the second one I made but then with that tight arm, I didn't like that. So I really wasn't in the mood to get dive into the weekender and do some modifications, but I want a sweater, big, you know, swooshy sweater out of this for the fall. Chris morning, coffee outside. Mm, my favorite time of year. Not really. Every time is my favorite, but I uh, can just see that happening. So hopefully I can pass or cast on for that in like September 1st, the beginning of September. But I'm, I have to finish these three things. You heard it here before I can cast on for that. So that's my plan. That's my goal. I hope you guys have some fun knitting goals and plans. And I hope you adore what you're working on. And until next time, remember, you always have a friend to knit with. All right. Take care. Bye. Okay, so this is our living room slash dining room. This is where I spend many winter days knitting. And early in the spring, watching the hornets build and start a tiny, tiny nest right there in the window. And since then, it has grown into this most unbelievable. I hope that the light will let me do this. But, okay, can you see how unbelievable they are and how busy? Sorry, I can see my fingers reflecting. They are literally nonstop all night long all hours of the day. Look at how talented they are. Layer just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And it looks like they're coming over to this pane. If you can see, and they built a horn <laughs> to let everyone know that they are hornets. No, I don't know why, but Can't get to their front door. So you can see how busy they are there. But they're in and out and in and out and in and out. Wait, sorry for the reflection. Can you see them? They are as busy as little knitters, perfecting their talent. All right, hope you enjoyed. I'll try to get another one at another point in time where my reflection is not too apparent. All right, happy creating.